Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cathexis and Impro Integration webinar. We are going to start in just two minutes just to give everybody a chance to log in and get onto the webinar. So we'll be with you shortly. Thank you. Hi everybody, thank you for joining us today. We're just going to be one more minute so that we can get everybody into the system quickly. Won't be a moment, thank you. Officially welcome. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, thank you for joining us today for the Cathexis and Impro Integration webinar. Uh, we have people from all around the world, so thank you for those of you who've got up early or are staying up late uh, to join us today. Before we begin the session, I'd just like to take you through a little bit of the housekeeping. So all attendees are muted. Um, so you won't be able to speak during the event. However, at any point through the event, you can put your questions in under the question block. And at the end of the session, we have allocated some time to go through on a little Q&A session. So please drop those questions in, just type them into the, the question bar, and we'll then go through those at the end of the session. In addition, we are recording this webinar, and that will be made available after the event, and we will email you to make you aware once it's available. In addition, in the grey block, you'll see there's a little thing called handouts. Please feel free to download those at any stage. It's just giving you more information on the integration, as well as Impro and Cathexis in terms of a broader product offering. Final element is at the end of this webinar, we have a very brief survey, five or six questions at the most, take you two minutes. And we do ask you, please, just to complete that survey for us, gives us a nice insight in terms of the market and product needs. So as we kick off our session this, this morning and afternoon, evening, I'd just like to introduce you to our presenters today. So on the Impro Technology side, we have Tim, who will take you through our access control solutions, and then Gus from the Cathexis side, who will be demonstrating the actual integration and also give you good insight into Cathexis and their solutions. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Tim from Impro Technologies. And he's going to take us through the agenda for today. OK, thanks. Uh, thanks, Vicky. You're just not in presentation mode there, Tim. Thank you. Okay. So, um, as Vicky said, we've got a, an intro, a high level intro to uh, Impro Technologies. We'll have a quick look at the access portal system from Impro. And then I'll hand over to my colleague from Cathexis, Gus, and he's going to do the same for the high level introduction to Cathexis. 
and then the actual integration of the two systems. Uh, it'll show some demos and then we'll go to questions and answers. So first of all, let's have a look at the, the roadmap um, where Impro started and where we are today. Um, we started in 1986 um, with uh, started a company. It was run by uh, a gentleman for years called Errol East, who was the managing director. And started with uh, first offline systems, uh, the products like LinkScan, FlexiScan, Uniscan, and Multiscan. Uh, from there, we went to our first online systems, which was the IXP range. Um, the smaller system was the IXP220, and the biggest system was the IXP400. And there's still quite a few IXP systems around. Um, a lot of IXP400 systems, um, just showing the reliability of the system. It was a real bulletproof system. From there, we progressed into 2013-2014 to the Impro portal, access portal system, our first web-based solution, which we still run today. Uh, we've gone through various uh, upgrades of that system, currently running at um, portal 4.4. And later in the year, we'll be releasing a complete new Portal UX, which will be Portal 5. One of the key points in our progression was the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. The company was acquired uh, by the Asa Abloy Group. Uh, we report into another Asa Abloy company, which is the HID Corporation. So, if we look at our global footprint, uh, we have exported to 60 countries worldwide, over four continents. We have some key distributors around the world, um, all the way from America, Tampa Bay, a company called PMtronics, who are, just for information's sake, are also Cathexis um, distributors as well. Western Europe, we've got a, a few successful distributors there. Obviously, the African continent, we're very dominant in uh, because we're a South African-based company. And in the Australasias as well, we, we've uh, been very successful. So we've been around for 35 years. So we've got 35 years of access control knowledge. Um, we were one of the first companies in the world to adopt RFID technology. And for a small South African company at the time, that was quite an achievement. As we have spoke about, we've got global network of uh, qualified partners. Uh, two things that we, we get a lot of feedback on, uh, a lot of good, great feedback on, is uh, training schedules where we've got um, certified technical training courses, four levels of training. We have, uh, we do consultants training, CPD, continuous professional training. We've got online sales certification courses and so on. And then the second thing that we get a lot of good feedback is our technical support department. Um, we've got five full-time technical support people that are available 24 seven and because of the systems they support all around the world. From a, a product development point of view, 6% of our revenue goes back into um, R&D. Um, all the R&D is done at our head office in Pine Town in Durban. We have 31 full-time engineers. Um, some of those are paid for by Asset Abloy, and some of them are paid for by HID because we did development for the rest of the group as well. Um, but we have some key people just dedicated to the Impro roadmap going forward as well. So our manufacturing assembly plant is in Pine Town. Uh, we manufacture to all uh, international standards because of the distribution of the product around the world. So for instance, CE for Europe, uh, UL for America, and so on. Um, we can expand our manufacturing to meet demands. Uh, for instance, the, the, the factory is working overtime to cope with the current 
outstanding orders. Um, although at this point in time, as probably most of you know, there's a, a worldwide shortage of semiconductors. So we're, we're suffering just as, as the same as other um, manufacturers at this point in time. The, the picture on the right hand side there is just a picture of uh, one of our um, factory workers with some of our pick and place machines. Uh, we also uh, manufactured to ISO standards and we have done since 1999 as well. So we, as I said, we've got 35 years experience in the access control solutions industry. Uh, we're an end-to-end -end access control solution. We're probably one of the only companies in uh, the asset abloy group that does that. And what I mean by that is we do everything from the, the software to the controllers, to the modules, to the readers, to the credentials. So we have a full access control offering. Onto the access portal system. So access portal system uh, is in four different levels. Uh, we start with the access portal light system. So this system is a one-site solution, entry-level system. You can do eight anti-passback doors with this or 16 reader in and request to exit to eight doors as well. So you've got a total of a thousand tag holders. Uh, I just must emphasize that this system doesn't come with online software. The actual software is embedded in our network controller, which we refer to as a cluster controller. So you interrogate it through a thin client uh, and it's compatible with any web browsers. Then we go to our first online solution, which is Access Portal Basic. This is also a one-site solution, also a thousand tag holders but this now goes up to 100 doors anti-passback. When we get to uh, our first multi-site system, we go to Access Portal Pro. Access Portal Pro uh, will serve 25 sites. It now goes from 1,000 uh, tag holders on basic to 120,000 tag holders in Pro. Um, it will also do a total of 5,000 doors, but limited to 200 doors per site. And then we go to our Access Enterprise level system. And this goes from 125,000 tag holders to a million tag holders. It goes from 5,000 doors to 10,000 doors and 500 doors per site and 1,000 sites. So you can do some really big systems. Just as a, a matter of interest, a typical example of enterprise would be um, the University of Pretoria, for instance, which runs on Portal Enterprise. So, as mentioned, uh, Portal is a web-based solution, so it operates on a single, single server application. Uh, versus IXP, which uh, run on a server per site. So you have to uh, install software on every site. Um, Portal operates on a single server. It uses a thin client to interrogate it wherever you are, uh, which is a big advantage. The database runs on SQL. And the database can be on the same machine or it can run on a separate server. Um, the user interface, very simple to use. Uh, it's very customizable for the user. Um, it's got, most of the screens have got uh, contextual help. So you can, you can get information. If you're not quite sure how to, for instance, enroll a new card, you can click on contextual help and it will talk you through it. It's very mobile. So what we mean by that is you can actually run the software from your cell phone or a tablet. And also we have a full directory integration as well with Alpha. And from a feature point of view, uh, we've done a lot of migrations of our old IXP 400 system to Portal. We have several tools that are available to do database conversions and to pull the data across into the new Access Portal system. And our support department also uh, assists with that as well. Uh, there's no rip and replace 
um, simply increase the hardware and upgrade. Um, the IXP hardware, the old um, ITRTs, which we still sell quite a bit of, fully, fully compatible uh, if you upgrade to portal. So you don't have to replace every controller on site. There's only a certain portion of the system that you do have to replace. So that's a big advantage when we're doing upgrades. Um, one great selling point is whether you're installing Portal Lite, Basic, Pro or Enterprise, it's the same hardware all the way through. So if you start with a Lite system, um, the actual network controller, which is called the cluster controller, has all the different firmwares in there. By flicking the switches, you can quite easily go to an online system, whether it's basic, pro, or enterprise. So it's fully scalable and fully upgradable. We have um, some third-party high-level integrations, reader integrations. Obviously, we're part of the same group as the HID Corporation, so all the HID readers uh, and credentials are fully integrated into Portal. So the new range of Signal readers, we'll read all the different uh, technologies that come from those readers, whether it be connected via Wigand or OSDP. Um, we also support all the HID mobile credentials, uh, so that's another great selling point for us. Just as a matter of interest, on that picture there, the middle reader is a fingerprint reader, uh, which we call the Signo 25B. Um, that was actually designed and it's actually built by Impro in the factory for HID. So that just shows you some of the developments that we do for the rest of the group. Then we have a range of wireless locks, which is called the Perio. This is also from a sister company, Asa Abloy. Um, we have these fully integrated with the portal system. If it's on light, we connect a, a wireless hub via RS-485 and it's on the rest of the systems, we connect an IP hub to talk to all these locks. Then we have um, a long-term relationship with a Dutch company called NEDAP that do long-range readers. They do readers that read two meters, five meters and 10 meters away uh, and use quite a lot of the infra portal system. And then last but not least, we've got a, a direct relationship with two of the leading biometric manufacturers in the world, a long-time relationship with Idemia, um, with all the fingerprint technology, uh, the new facial reader, the Fission Pass, and quite a popular product in South Africa is the Morpho Wave unit. These are all fully integrated. Same with Suprema, all the fingerprint readers and, the, and all the facial readers are fully integrated as well. And what I mean by fully integrated is you don't need the third party software from Suprema, which is Biostar, and the third party from IDMA, which is Morpho Wave, to do your take on. All the take ons are done directly in the portal software, so fully integrated. When it comes to um, system integrations, obviously, portal's there to manage your access control with your employees, contractors, visitors, and assets. Assets could be laptops or high value equipment or vehicles coming in and out of a facility. But on the other end of it, obviously we need to integrate into other vertical electronic systems in a building. And we have a very strong API to do this, um, such as integrate into intrusion, uh, time and attendance and workforce management systems. And then of course, um, video management systems such as Cathexas. Um, Cathex has actually did the integration using our API. Uh, I'll give you an example, um, University of the Western Cape, uh, which is a big Cathex and Impro site. I think it's about 500 video channels and just under a thousand doors on the access control system fully integrated, just as an example. Okay, I'm going to now uh, hand over to my colleague from um, Cathexis, uh, Gus, who's now going to talk you through um, the Cathexis product. So let me just transfer it to Gus. Gus, do you see there? Excellent. All right, guys, can you all see my screen? 
Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Tim, uh, for that introduction. And thanks, Vicky, uh, for organizing this webinar. And uh, thanks, everybody, for attending. It looks like we've got a really good, uh, really good ten turnout. Um, as t t uh, Tim mentioned, my name is Gus, and I'm the Global Business Development Co uh, Director for Cathexis Technologies. So first, what I'm going to do is just give a little introduction into Cathexis, our products, what we do, and then I'm going to go into the integration in detail. So who is Cathexis? So Cathexis is one of the world leaders in video surveillance management solutions. We've been around 25 years, so as you can imagine, being that we're so old, we started off in, in the analog video space. Our product is sold in over 50 countries, and we've got several million channels of video running on our system as we speak. Just to blow, uh, blow our own trumpet a little bit, uh, we won the Benchmark Innovation Awards um, for, for Best Product in 2020, and it's always nice to get recognized by international assessment groups the benchmark is a, a uk-based assessment group and we won this award against probably the top five vms companies in the world i won't mention any names and our footprint is very similar to impros uh, in in that we our head office is in durban uh, we're literally 20 kilometers away from from impro themselves and obviously because of that we've got a very strong relationship but we sell around the world with our products and have been doing so for a long time. And just looking at the different market sectors that we work in, we cover most market sectors uh, with our product. And because the product is so powerful and so flexible, we can cover anything from banking. Banking is a very big sector uh, for us. We've got one of the biggest stock exchanges in the world using our product across uh, 20 different countries. City surveillance, obviously, one massive sector, we do the city of Albany, which is the capital of New York State. We do some of the houses of parliament. Education, massive sector. Tim touched on the University of the Western Cape, which uh, is one of the sites where we've integrated with IMPRO. But our biggest site probably is the University of Istanbul in Turkey, which has got 2,000 cameras. Um, healthcare is a very big growing sector for us particularly in the UK, but also in South Africa and the US. And there we've integrated with uh, several of the, the third party systems that they use, like nurse call systems, uh, uh, phrase systems, etc. Uh, hospitality, that's the hotels, hotels slash casinos. I think we've just done our 75th hotel in, in the Middle East. Um, logistics centers, and this ties in with our with our retailers as well, because we're very strong in retail and most retailers have got uh, massive warehouses. So we do the biggest warehouse in Europe, uses our software. And we also deal with companies like uh, like DHL and, and those sorts of guys. Manufacturing, also a big sector for us. Mining is probably where we cut our teeth, being South African. Um, the mining industry has got quite a unique demand and we do the three biggest gold mining companies in the world and the biggest platinum mining company in the world using our product all across multiple countries with centralized monitoring property being uh, a commercial property uh, residential property etc where it's a very big sector and then a lot of people use our product for off-site monitoring as well because we've got a full command center and incident management system within our software suite. And last but not least, uh, retail. Uh, we are the biggest supplier of video management solutions to the retail industry in the UK, uh, but we supply retail globally. Uh, so our biggest retail customer has got 65,000 video channels running on our software across about 2,500 sites. Again, I won't mention any names, but it's um, a massive uh, uh, operation. And they've got a centralized monitoring center where they can do a full uh, assessment and management of all their 2,500 sites and all 65,000 cameras. So that gives you an idea of some of the market sectors. There are more, for instance, we do airports, which is not on here. Etc. But just to give you a feel that we do cover most 
of the different markets. And then for those of you who don't, who think that a video management system is purely a video recorder, so for you to view and record video, I'm going to quickly run you through the Cathexis ecosystem to, to give you a better feel for what we do as a company and what our software does as a company. So obviously you've got the Cathexis Vision software sitting in the center of this ecosystem. And because we're a video management software, software company, of course, we're going to talk to cameras. Um, but we don't just receive video from cameras. We've got the ability to control IOs on the camera, to receive inputs from the camera, to do uh, uni or bi-directional audio, to receive triggers from the camera if you've got edge analytics, to do onboard storage, edge storage as well. Of course, once we've received the video, we've got to manage where that video goes. And for that, we need to talk to recording servers. And I must stress that all the hardware I'm referring to here the Cathexis Vision is product agnostic. So we talk to most of the world's popular IP cameras. We can talk to just about any uh, PC, uh, any computer on the market, whether it's a professional server-based uh, computer or, or a, a more entry-level product. Obviously, we then need to store the video somewhere, the video and the data. So we interface with storage systems. And by that, I mean onboard storage. We talk to network storage, SAN, edge storage, etc. Once we've got all the video and we're storing it and we're managing it, we need to give people the ability to view that. And hence, we need to interface with client servers. We've also got our own video wall software, which is an intelligent video wall, which allows uh, the system to automatically switch cameras to monitors uh, to enhance the control room environment. And of course, you've got your remote clients, people who want to be able to connect remotely from their mobile, from their laptop, etc., to dial in. On top of that, we've got our own video analytics and license plate recognition um, offering and we interface with third party systems as well. So third party integrations is a lot of what we do. And by third party integrations, I mean things like way bridges, parking systems, alarm systems, uh, intrusion alarms, point of sale systems for retail, face recognition solutions, fire, um, fire detection systems, elevators and escalators in your building management uh, systems, of course intercoms, uh, cash counters for the banking environment and casinos etc and fence monitoring and of course last but not least and the reason we have today your access control integrations and of course on top of this we need to take into account privacy so we got to take into account gdpr and in south africa poppy and we're very serious about uh, privacy and uh, and data protection and of course cyber security so as you can see from that slide we do a lot more than just receiving video and saving video our, our solution really offers a complete um complete benefit to the end user in many different different facets of business and by that i mean um, things like security health and safety operational effectiveness and efficiency theft and shrinkage and the bottom line is to try and improve the return on the investment for for the customer so i think that just gives you a very brief introduction to what we do and I'm going to touch on a few of the, the major features of the Cathexis Vision product before I go into the integration in depth. So we're a, a multi-site enterprise architecture product. As I mentioned earlier in my reference to the large retailer, we, we had there, we've got 2,500 sites being managed from a central point. Um, because we want the control room environment to be as, uh, as unique and as tailored to the, the customer's requirements as possible. We've got an event and alarm management um, component in the, in the software. Obviously, we integrate with third-party systems, which I'm going to go into more detail later. Then in order to try and make the control room operation more effective, we've introduced a lot of smart search features to enable them to find incidents and video extremely quickly. And we can give you a little bit more detail on that offline. Uh, 
Also, for an operational effectiveness point of view, we've introduced adjacent camera mapping, which allows people to follow uh, users to follow people through cameras very simply. And I've already touched on the fact that we've got an intelligent video wall. We've got our own license plate recognition offering. And very importantly, our health monitoring ensures the system uptime. And by health monitoring, I mean monitoring the whole system to see if anything is going wrong, to create real-time alerts, to generate reports. And we've also got failover in case a server fails, then we've got hot standbys. Added to that, we've got a complete video analytics suite, and that includes uh, artificial intelligence via neural networks and deep learning. And we believe that our video analytics suite covers about 85 to 90% of what most of our customers need from analytics. If there's anything that we don't do in analytics, we do integrate with third-party ana specialist analy analytics companies. And of course, I've mentioned before, cybersecurity. Right, let's go straight into the Impro and Cathexis integration. And I'm going to apologize in advance here if I go into a little bit too much detail for people, but I think it's important to show the detail so that you can get a real feel for the depth of the integration and the capability. So just quickly, the Impro Cathexis relationship. We've been working together for over 10 years. As uh, we mentioned, they, they're in the same city as us, so the relationship's very close. The range of integrations include all the older products, the IXP products and the newer portal range of products. And we worked on many successful projects together. So then the question is going to be asked, well, what is the point of integration? Well, what we need to do is we want to take the, the power of the two systems and enable the operator to receive notifications and receive information and find information from a single user interface. We want to add visual verification of transactions. So we believe that any transaction, whether it's an access control transaction or a transaction from a fire panel, can be enhanced by the addition of video. We want to be able to create real-time alerts. We want to enable quick database mining to find video and data. And ultimately minimize errors and improve response times, which culminates in the fact that we can improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of the overall solution to the customer. So how does this integration work? Well, we've got your two systems, your Impro access control system and your Cathexis system. And Impro basically sends system and transaction data to us. So by system information, we mean what does the access control system look like? how many doors are there, how many controllers, et cetera. And the transaction data is each transaction that occurs. Once we've got that information, we can then associate doors with cameras. So the idea is that we would associate, say, camera number five with, uh, sorry, door number five with camera number 20. And we can associate more than one camera with a single door. So we can associate four cameras with one door, for instance, et cetera, et cetera, until all the doors have got their cameras associated with it. We then receive the transactions, store them in a database, and store the, the video synchronized with that database so that every transaction has got synchronized video associated with it. Then we enable users to use the system by connecting through the Cathexis Vision software. And by this, we mean real-time alerts, real-time monitoring, and database uh, mining. Okay, so that gives you an overview of how the systems fit together. So now let's look at the capabilities. Firstly, we want to be able to set up event triggers on selected access control transactions. So when we receive a transaction, we want to be able to set up a trigger. So that, for instance, on the right hand side of your screen is the actual Cathexis software, and we are setting up uh, an event to occur when a specific transaction happens. For instance, we can trigger an event on anti-fastback, on a door held open, on a door forced, anti-tamper, on lockdown, suspended tags. We can trigger different events on different times of day, etc., etc. So any transaction 
that we receive from Impro, we can trigger an event on, and then we can take a different action. So we can say we want to choose a specific action to take due to a specific trigger. For instance, we want to may want to record a specific camera to a specific database depending on the on the door. We might want to send an alarm to a control room if there's been an anti-pass back. We might want to move a PTZ camera to zoom in on a door when there's a transaction after hours. We might want to switch a camera to a monitor if there's been a door held open and play audio clips, et cetera. So I will send an email to a manager if somebody's coming to the premises after hours. So there's many different actions that we can take depending on the event that's been triggered which has been then set up according to the transaction received from Impro. So that's your live actions that you can set up. Then on top of that, we've gone really deep with the Impro integration on some of the products. So this is an example of a, the, the, the user interface from Cathexis for the portal light, where we can actually go in and set up things like tag holders, set up doors, we can set up access groups. So we can do any of the functions that are that's required to set up the product from the Cathexis user interface. And depending on the type of product that the Impro product, each interface is slightly different. Continuing with the capabilities, obviously we can display live video with an overlay of the transaction that's occurring. We can, we've got a map interface, so we can notify users on a map. For instance, if there's been an anti-pass back or a door's been held open, etc., and that's completely configurable. From this, from the map interface, we can even open and close a door on the on the Impro system if required. Right now, I'm going to go into the the database. So what I've shown you so far is really relevant to live viewing and real-time alerts. The database allows you to go and find video footage and find transactions um, that are required. And so I'm going to quickly run you through the metadatabase, what it looks like. So this is an example of the, the, the database. You can see all the different transactions allowed in, uh, which door it is, etc., the name of the person, the tag code, the device name, etc. So that's the transaction list. In the, on the right-hand side, you can see the transaction video with the data overlay. Then on the extreme right is detail, more detailed transaction information. We've then got a quick search area, a smart search filter, which I'm gonna go into some more detail later. The ability to export data. So you can, once you've filtered, you can then export. There's a reporting tool, which allows you to email reports automatically. We can export the selected video footage and data, set your lead in and lead out settings, and I'll go into more detail with that. You can choose to loop the video or playback in sequence. And then you've got your standard navigation and your database scrolling. Okay, so that just gives you a quick snapshot of the database information, database capability. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got a few video clips that I'm just going to talk over and they're going to just show you the database in action all right so in this video clip i'm just going to show you how you're going to choose a transaction you can see there's the transactions on the left the video in the center and the detail on the right so if i double double click on a transaction it automatically goes to the video at the time at which the transaction occurred so there there's the transaction and now I can zoom in, I can zoom out. I can change the speed of playback. And then we've got a little button there that allows you to quickly jump back um, 10 seconds. So I'm just jumping back 10 seconds. I'm just gonna jump back again 10 seconds. I can also go to a specific time using the, the time uh, selector. And then I can go and choose an area of video footage, and I'm just tagging that. 
and then I can export that. And you'll see when I push the export button, that it allows you to export that video footage along with the particular transaction. Now on this next video clip, I'm going to show you. Oh, sorry, it's the same clip again. <laughs> we don't want to see that, do we? Okay. Now, right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you where we've associated four cameras with a single transaction. So on this reception camera, we've got a, getting a, a, a transaction from the from the, the Impro system saying there's been a, a transaction there, and there you can see the people walking in on the one camera, and then on this camera you'll see the transaction occurring, and then we can switch between the cameras. So. We've had one transaction from Impro, but we've associated four cameras with that particular transaction. And now when I, when I export that, uh, that transaction and the footage, you'll see that it exports all those cameras plus the transaction information as well. Over here, I'm going to show you a PTZ camera being automatically moved upon a transaction. So as the, the lady there does the transaction, you'll see the PTZ camera automatically zoom into that area. So I touched on that earlier as one of the actions that we can take due to a transaction occurring. Right, on the next video clip, I'm going to show you Into duplicate clips, yeah. Okay. On this video clip, I'm going to show you how to search the database. So if you look at the top right, I'm going to click on the easy search. And I can search on any particular field of data that's received from Impro. So for instance, here I'm just going to go easy search. And for instance, I can choose search for all the transactions in the long cupboard. Click on that and you'll see the transaction on the long cupboard. I can search by username and our system learns the usernames as they come in and offers them as a drop down. So I've searched for all the transactions for Marco Rousseau. We've also got what we call a smart filter and this enables you to have multiple fields. So you can see all those fields that we, are, that we can search on and the more fields we get, the more that drop down will offer you. We can choose the time. So we've got a few different standard times. We've got week to date, month to date, quarter to date, etc. We can choose a specific time. You can say, I want to just look at the previous X number of hours or days or weeks, or you can choose a specific period. So what I'm going to do for the purposes of this demo is just to choose the week to date. Then I think I'm going to choose a user. And I can choose multiple users. So I can say if a user is equal to someone or it's one of multiple people. So for instance, I want to add Heinrich, I want to add Marco, Neville. So basically, I'm going to search for all the transactions from those people in the week to date. Okay, so let me just change that. I'm just going to say the search for one person. I'm going to look for all Neville Shields transactions. So those are all the transactions for Neville. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the lead in and lead out time. So this is the video before the transaction and the video after the transaction. I'm going to play back in double speed. And then I'm going to play them in sequence. So basically with sequence, you can follow somebody through an organization by playing them back, the transactions back sequentially. So here I'm playing them back double speed. So there you can see Neville going into the storeroom. The next transaction is going to the cupboard. And it'll automatically jump to the next one where he's going in the back entrance. And there you can see it's zooming in on him. Then he's going in the, the back. Uh, storage area, and then back to the cupboard. So that's what we call our follow me feature. 
which allows you to sequentially follow somebody through an organization with the transaction and the video associated. Right, on the next video, I'm jumping to a different site. So this is a different site. And um, I'm going to show you a transaction which is slightly different. So what I've showed you to date is I've showed you some normal transactions. And what I'm going to do is show you an abnormal transaction. So you can see over here, we've got some anti-passback transactions and door held open. So let's have a look at those. So this is a, another normal transaction at a different site. And I can see there's a couple of anti-passback transactions here. So let's look at one of those. And there you can see someone desperately trying to get in with their, with their, with their card. Now, we could have decided to switch a camera to a monitor, to send an email, to generate an alert when that anti passback transaction occurred. He has a door held, up, held open too long, and there you can see somebody let that person in and held the door open for too long. Now, I'm going to show you the export feature. So, once I've done a filter and I've filtered the transactions that I want to see, I can uh, export that via CSV file or via a PDF uh, file. And that'll export the list of transactions. I can also generate an automated report. So let's add a new report. Let's call it Gus Test. And now I can go and configure that report. So we can decide to do a standard. We've got two different views. The one is a standard view where it limits the number of transactions you can see. The other one is full. Now I want to say I want to generate a report of any of these transactions that I'm going to select. So it's anti-passback, door open too long, etc. So any one of those transactions I want to report on, I want to look at the week to date. I want to export a report in PDF format. And I want to send this daily at 12 o'clock. And then I can add recipients in there. And this report will now get emailed every day at 12 o'clock to specific recipients. Okay, so that's basically the reporting. What I'm going to show you now is, and I alluded to this earlier, that we've got a full incident management system. What the screen you're seeing now is our what we call our alarm management gateway, which is basically a what's be what will be used in a, at a central point if you're receiving alerts from multiple multiple sites, or in fact as a black screen monitoring solution for a single site. So. I'm going to kind of play this video. There you can see some transactions at the top that's been received at the central alarm gateway. Now, if I double click on one of the alarms, so you're just looking at your incoming alarms, your current alarms, and then your alarm history. If I double click on one of the alarms, it will automatically connect to the site from where the alarm came. And it will automatically fetch the video footage associated with that particular alert. So there you can see an alert came in. It said there's an anti passback violation, and there's the, the video associated with that anti passback violation. It also opens a live camera of your choice, so you can see the live camera on your screen. So you've got the, the alert footage plus the live footage. I can then archive that locally to the central point, and we've got a whole lot of comments that you can add in. So I contacted the police, and then I can close the alarm. And you can see procedures to follow. And that alarm is now sitting in the history that you can go and find that alarm anytime. So if I click on the alarm, you can ask the where the alarm came from, which site, uh, which server, what the alarm description is, when the alarm happened, any recordings that are, that are associated with that alarm, any comments that have been added. 
And on top of that, we can also escalate that alarm to a supervisor, if necessary, by opening what we call a case document. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot more detail on our alarm management system, um, but suffice to say that we can receive alerts from many different sites on anti-passback, on access control, and I see this is even an alarm from a blacklist license plate recognition, for instance, which is not really relevant for today. So that I think gives you a pretty good overview of the power of the integration. Um, and just to summarize, I think what I've shown you today is the ability to associate cameras with access points, the ability to set up real-time alerts and actions on selected transactions, the ability to visualize those alerts on a map interface, to easily find transactions and the associated video footage from the Meta database, and to receive and manage transaction alarms from a central alarm and incident management gateway. So that's all from me, guys. I think, uh, and again, I apologize if there was a little bit too much detail for some people, but I think it's important to show that to see the power of the system. So what I'm going to do now is hand back to Vicky to handle the... If you just keep it with you, Gus. So if you just keep uh, that okay. up. All right. And then I'll right. come to Q&As. So all Gus, right, thank sure. you so much. Um, I think you'll all agree, a fantastic integration very powerful tools um, and, and got to do a little bit of a sales job here. If you haven't ordered one yet, best you start ordering. Um, okay, now into our Q&A session. So as I mentioned at the beginning, if you have any questions, please just type them in under the uh, questions panel. I can see those coming through live, so thank you very much. Um, I'm going to introduce you to a couple more people who we have on the call in the background. So we have Daryl from Cathexis and we have Hamish from Impro and they are the product managers on these initiatives. So if there's some technical questions, we've got the guys on hand to answer those as well. So let's have a quick look and, and dive into some of these questions. Um, so we have a question here. Is there an API to integrate Access Portal with other time and attendance? products. Um, Hamish, maybe I can call on you. Hamish from Impro, please. Yes, there, there is an API. Um, so we just require a NDA signed between ourselves and, and the integrating party, and then we can release the API to, to, uh, to whoever needs to de develop. Wonderful. Thank you, Hamish. Um, then uh, perhaps I can call on Gus or Daryl here. We have a question for sites with 500 plus cameras. Which NVRs do you use for recording? Uh, good day, it's Daryl. Yeah. You um, want to answer that, Daryl? Yeah, I can answer that. We have a, a system design tool on our website that you can actually access, which will give you minimum requirements for whatever system you um, intend implementing. Um, it includes um, obviously the number of cameras and also features that you actually want to add. So if you need to add an analytics with the cameras, it can do the calculations on that and give you the amount of RAM and CPU specifications required to be able to meet um, the, and uh, get the desired performance from your site. Fantastic, thanks Daryl. Um, I see Justin has asked if we could do some Zoom actions. Um, Justin, I'm not sure if it covered what you wanted in terms of what Gus has already shown. However, uh, the Cathexis team will hook up with you because they can always give you a demo of that in more detail and any special requirements you have. So if I can just remind everyone here as well, if you do want one-on-one -on -one demos, more than happy to accommodate that, that's not a problem. Uh, then we have um, Gus, maybe you can answer this one, please. Uh, we have a question whether the Cathexis platform and the integration can work with HikVision cameras. Yes, it can. Perfect. Um, then, 
Okay, I see quite a long question here. So, uh, can you create actions in order to visual? So, on the Cathexis map, can you visualize different events such as closed and open, forced access granted? So, different types of access control events. Can I see those on that map? To be honest, I'm not 100% sure of the total capability of that, Daryl. Have you got an answer for that? It's obviously limited to, well, the, the map, you can depict on the map um, individual doors on your site, and you can then get um, any event notification overlaid on the map pertaining to that particular door. You can also create um, an action on the map where you can actually see a door open and a door closed. Um, but all event information can be linked to the maps that we are receiving, provided the, the map has been configured with the available doors. Wonderful. Thanks, Daryl. Um, question here is, are we going to be able to get a copy of this after the event? Yes. We have recorded the session, so it will be made available as an on-demand webinar after the fact. Uh, we'll just do a quick edit on it, and then that'll be put onto um, an, a URL that we'll send out to all attendees. So yes, you will be able to get a copy of that. Then uh, we manage several office blocks from a central control room. Is it possible to control access at all these buildings from our central control room? Maybe Daryl, you'd like to answer that one, please. Is that not a question for Tim? Or Hamish? Uh, well, it's managing it from a central control room. Oh, sorry, yes, it is. Sorry. Apologies, it is. To control access at <clears throat> all these buildings. Apologies, yes. That's a Hamish. So, sorry, um, could, could you just repeat the question, Vicky? With pleasure. So, they have a central control room and they want to manage the access from their central control room for a number of different buildings. Is that possible? Uh, yes. Um, so, we've got uh, dash, dashboards um, where you can um, drop widgets that allow you to control um, access um, at the various points around the site. I hope that answers Thank the question. You. Uh, okay, we then have a question. Um, Daryl, uh, is the design tool available as part of the solution? Um, it's available. It's available on a login on our site, just so we know if you need help and assistance, that we can uh, support you as well. So you can log in onto our website and it's uh, freely available on the website. We just need um, an, an email address so we know who to contact and do a follow up if, ne if necessary. But yes, it's uh, available. It's not inbuilt in the solution, but, but obviously it's a, a pre-solution um, requirement, hence um, it's available on the website. Wonderful. So, looking for a design tool, head over to that Cathexis website. Um, then another one here is licensing per site or per Cathexis central management site. Uh, Daryl, maybe you'd like to take that one as well, please. Uh, licensing is per site. Um, so, you would have a, a site license that would cover the number of cameras and IP inputs um, that you are connecting to on the site. And then each individual camera will have a IP license um, assigned to, um, to the channel. It's not assigned directly to the camera, as well as any integration on that site will require a license for the integration itself. And if it's access control for the number of doors that you have on site. We do have a package that allows for unlimited doors, um, which is obviously a, a preference if you have a very large site. Wonderful, thank you. And then last question. However, I would like to say to everybody, because of time limits, um, any questions that haven't been answered here, we will reach out to you. We will get you answers to all of your questions. But the last question here, is, is the integration also done with the IXP 400 system? Now I stand under total correction here. I'm gonna take a stab at this one. But to my knowledge, and Daryl 
will correct me if I'm incorrect, it is actually done on Access Portal. So that's the main platform, um, but it's all the different versions of Access Portal. So you've got Light, Basic, Pro and Enterprise. Um, Daryl, maybe you can just confirm for me. Uh, yes, we are obviously we started off in early days. So we've got the IXP 20, we've got the IXP 220, and the IXP 400 are all integrated as well. And then we have um, evolved as Impro have come out with a new product offering. We have so um, increased, uh, well, we added to our integration. So the Portal Lite, Portal Pro, they all integrated as well. So yes, we have all of it. Okay, just the only thing please bear in mind on the IXP 400, you won't get all the same functionality that you get from Access Portal in terms of the access control side. But yes, IXP, Access Portal, integrated with Capexis. Um, everybody, thank you very much. As I say, unfortunately, due to time limits, we aren't going to be able to get through all these questions, but we will reach out to each of you and give you feedback on your questions. If you haven't uh, downloaded the handouts under the handout panel, I would recommend you do so. It gives you more information regarding the two products and that there's a nice integration brochure that gives you a good overview on this integration. We will make the webinar available as an on-demand in the next couple of weeks at the most. And then the final element is as we close this webinar, an automatic survey will pop up. Five or six questions. Please take two minutes to complete that. You will also receive a link to that same survey tomorrow. It's an automated system to say thank you for attending today's webinar with a link to that little survey. So if you aren't able to do it now, you will get a, a reminder tomorrow. Other than that, I thank Gus and Tim for a great presentation. Thank you to Daryl and Hamish for supporting in the questions. And most importantly, thank you everybody for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. And hopefully it's given you a good insight into the power of this integration. If you need anything further, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, on email, phone, as, as you need. Otherwise, have a great day and thank you again. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, guys.